some things you should know if you if you uh, if you endeavor to if you have read Fluke or endeavor to read it. There's things I didn't know about Flip when I wrote it, and I created the character of Clay when I went out to write that whale book. Um, that was I, I was going to write a book about whales, and then I met Flip and Jim and, and Megan, and I thought I I'm not going to write a book about whales. I'm going to write a book about whale people, and. Um, and Clay Demodocus, the, the Greek diver in, uh, in Fluke, there are a lot of things that are similar to Flip, but I didn't spend that much time. We were in Hawaii for five weeks uh, working with these guys, or basically just staying out of the way. Um, like, Flip doesn't swear, ever. I've never heard him swear at all, but Clay does quite a bit. And um, I hadn't met his lovely wife, Linda, so the, the Clay's girlfriend is sort of this fiery, smart mouth. Japanese woman, um, which has caused problems, and there's <laughs> and there, there's just the smallest bit of cross dressing um, in in the book that Flip probably does not engage in that we know of. So uh, other than that, um, <sighs> well, anyway, we'll answer that kind of dual questions later on. Um, I Flip does this a lot now. Um, he spent a lifetime putting those photos together, and, and so he knows how to do this. I don't. I've never done this, so this will be fun. Um, we uh, yesterday, Flip said we, we sat down. And he pulled out his, his MacBook and he said, "I'm going to give you the three minute version." And he went boom, 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 boom through all these pictures that you've just watched and sort of gave me the one line thing. And in three minutes, I had seen all of what you've just seen. And I said, okay, let me give you the three minute version of mine. And I started boom, 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 boom through the, the pictures that I had collected of art. And uh, two and a half hours later, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, I went, I'm going to have to cut this. Because um, I was only about three quarters of the way through, so I, I have no idea. Um, Oh, thank you. <laughs> nice. um, I brought, uh, asked Flip and, and Linda to join me, and Charlie and I in Paris, because, um, well, it's probably one of the most photogenic places in, in the world, certainly any place I had ever been. But I knew something about Flip is that if you're going to bring him anywhere, there has to be water there. Um, and we were out on a walk, um, getting over some jet lag about five in the morning one time, and this regatta went, was going down the Seine. And I knew since the Seine sort of bisected and was an in integral part of, of Paris that uh, Flip would be okay. But he, he sort of comes apart if you get him very far from water. And uh, he's, he is, Flip is the Little Mermaid, is, is what it is. Um, so we talked a lot about, about art, and, and the way I started into this was uh, I started doing national book tours about 15 years ago. And a book tour, if you don't know, is sort of uh, get up, go to the airport, get on an airplane, go to a city. If you're lucky, do some radio and TV. Go to a few bookstores and say hi and meet some people. Sign some books talking about your book, talking about your book, talking about your book, talking about your book in the car with the person who drives you around. And then um, if you're lucky, you get to go change your shirt. And that evening you go out and in front of... Uh, you know, anywhere from 30 to 500 people, you talk about yourself and talk about your book and talk about, and then you get up and you go do that again the next day, and you do that again the next day. And probably, it, as it comes to no surprise to you, that after about four days, I can't stand myself. I so don't want to hear anything about me or my book. Well, and uh, <laughs> so what I would do, there's sometimes the two hours during that day, and I, was, I had this opportunity that was given to me by this, this thing that I do to be in all these great cities in, in America for about, and have two hours of free time. So I would go to art museums and I would look at paintings. And I don't really know anything, or didn't really know anything about art. I just knew that if I looked at paintings for a couple of hours, the whole perspective of the world would change because some people confront art. Um, because the one thing that it was for sure not about was me. And you can walk away from looking at, you know, the, walking through the, the painting uh, exhibition at the Chicago Art Institute or the Philadelphia Museum of Fine Art or 
uh, the Metropolitan in New York, and, and there's just we have a great cl collection of, of paintings in this country, particularly of French imp impressionists, because when the impressionists weren't selling in France. They, there was a lot of money in America. There was it was the Industrial Revolution, and 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 uh, they sold a lot of paintings here. So Chicago has an amazing collection. You can sit in a room with 16 Monets in Chicago, and the next day sit in another room with 16 Monets in Philadelphia. I know this because there's fourth graders whose job it is to count how many <laughs> Monets are in the room as their that's their entire art education now. Um, you know, so that's good. Um, <laughs> As I said, everybody has their own way of sort of dealing with art, and I didn't know much about it. Some people feel a little bit overwhelmed by it. This is in the Louvre, actually. It did the opportunity that, you know, you look at art long enough and someone's going to wander by that sort of becomes part of it. And uh, that was, that's just a woman who's looking at that exhibition that, that was in the Louvre. Some people are a little overwhelmed by art. That's the bean. Um, some people are threatened by it. Um, <laughs> Some people just really want to engage art. They want to get into it. Uh, it's a little girl in the, in the Tuileries uh, garden in, uh, in Paris. Some people just ignore art altogether. <laughs> Vincent looks really kind of angry about that, doesn't he? <laughs> um, and some people start to look like the art. You can't really see here. And this, is, this isn't really, even when, before we put all these layers between it, uh, this wasn't a really sharp photograph, but the the idea that that woman was walking by at that time on that painting, and I had a camera, was kind of, you know, had to do it. Um, that guy just <laughs> sort of coordinated. And that's what I'm saying. Is when, you, when you look at art, you, you get this perspective shift. It's almost mystical, where everything starts to look like that, and it's a new appreciation of everything. It becomes a, a composition. And, and so I started to, I thought, well, I, I've been doing this now for 15 years. I'm, I'm from the Midwest where, you know, someone's going to say, well, what's that for? Why, why are you doing that? You know? So I thought, well, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to write a book about art. So, um, and I'm going to write about the Impressionists because I looked at a lot of their paintings. And um, this is at the Louvre. It was just a guy who has a job in art. And I, uh, it's just kind of one of the better photographs I've ever taken is why you're looking at it. It's really not. It has nothing to do with the story. Um, we woke up one day. Art happens in Paris. We were staying on the Ile de la Cité, um, in the middle of Paris, right, the same island that Notre, Notre Dame is on. And we woke up one morning, and that was painted on the river uh, wall. And, and uh, you know, at night, it was even a little more stunning. That was painted on all the bridges on the Seine. There was no notice. Well, would have helped if I spoke French. But um, there may have been, may have been in the paper, but yeah. there wasn't any pictures. I didn't know. But, uh, I speak kind of Tarzan French. Uh, well, there's so many silent letters. <laughs> you know, I can read the little tags. I'll be at the museum and I'll read the tags and I know what they say and everything. And then someone will say something to me. And I go, "That's not what. That's not that." It's because basically in French, this is for, you know, you might want to make a note of this, all letters in, in French are silent. Um, 